give you 50,000 RPM and give you boost. Now, I just tested these batteries and let's look at the results. Okay, I have my voltage gauge. We'll test the main battery, the one that runs the car's electrical system. Okay, got a positive terminal, second terminal, and there's our reading. Not too bad. Um, a good healthy battery should be between uh, maybe 12.5 and 12.8 volts. So this one's still healthy, 12.63. Okay. Okay, so I got one of my leads on the positive, one of my leads on the negative of this small battery. And look at that, we got 12.74. So this battery also is strong. Okay, I have one of my leads on the negative, one of my leads on the positive. Let's see our reading. Oh, 11.71. <clears throat> I think we've got our culprit. That is our culprit. We have a bad battery. Okay, so this did last two years, so I'm not completely unhappy about that. I am gonna to have to get a new replacement battery, just one, and then my electric supercharger should be back online. Just for the heck of it, these two batteries, of course, are connected in series, as you can see. You've got positive, negative to positive, and then out to negative. And we just adjust our voltmeter to high voltage, and we can see that we actually do have, see, 24 volts. 24 volts. There we go. 2,000 years later. All right, everybody, my battery has arrived. So now I'm gonna put it in my FRS and see if I can get the Phantom electric supercharger working because I'm really missing it. I miss the extra power. It's been too long, so it's time to get this guy working. Oh, and by the way, this is the battery that I've got, the um, Deca Sports ETX 16L battery. And this is the price I paid in Canadian dollars. That'd be about $90 US. There she is. Oh yeah. Deca. ETX. Now, as you can see, this battery is mostly made for ATVs, motorcycles, but it'll work fine for me. Yes! Okay, I have to take my battery pack all apart. First thing you do is you take off the negative terminal. Okay, just so it's clear about the wiring here for the electric supercharger, this is your positive terminal to the positive terminal on my small ETX30L. And then you got a negative terminal that goes by cable over to the negative, negative terminal here. So that runs the car as per normal. But then you have these two extra batteries here, which are connected to the controller here via this very heavy cable. And as you can see, there's two batteries here. One, two. Positives over here. Negatives over here. And then you got a bridge, a copper strap that goes across the two that connects the negative terminal from one ETX 16L to the positive terminal of the other ETX 16L. And then negative comes out here 
this cable goes all the way through here to the controller. The controller then, when it gets a signal from your throttle switch, then activates and sends the electric current to your electric motor, your brushless motor. This turns up to 55,000 RPM, spins the impeller. This is the cold side of a regular small turbo, and that compresses the air into the motor. Okay, the whole battery pack has now been disconnected. I can lift this thing out of here so I can work on it. Uh, it is quite heavy. I think I can do it. Let's lift it out. Okay, she's out. And as you can see, there's a ton of room in here for this battery pack. I mean, this is what's really good about this car is that actually there is a lot of room all the way out to here if you need to, to fit a bunch of batteries. Okay, so as you can see here, these batteries are all bound together with duct tape. Duct tape for the win. It's crude, but effective. You put enough duct tape around here and that's gonna hold everything in place. So now I gotta take this off put the new battery in place of this one, clean everything, and re-duct tape it, put it back in. Okay, now that I've got the duct tape off of these two batteries, you can see, I think maybe, you can see that this battery, the wall is bowed out this way, bowed out on this one. That's a sign of a bad battery. Whenever you get that, that means that there's been uh, chemical reactions, and uh, this is no good, as you can see. It's bowed out a little bit here while this one is flat or concave. So this is our bad battery. He's out of here. Okay, we've got our new battery. Now we just gotta tape up these two batteries. These are the two that work the electric supercharger. We're gonna duct tape these together first and then duct tape our uh, third car battery over into a hole thing. Those two are taped together. Now, taped together all three. Okay, it's all taped up, all three together. Duct tape for the win. Okay, so I gotta remember to have the terminals in the proper location, of course. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, it's ready to go back in the car. Okay, that's pretty heavy. It's actually a little bit heavier than the original big battery that was in there, but not by that much. Okay, so now we reconnect everything back to where it was before. Okay, I've got most of the connections done. It's important to remember that when you're tightening all these bolts, uh, remember you're tightening them into lead. So this has to be snug. You don't have to really wail on it, just snug. Okay, everything's together. Got the battery cover on battery hold down, everything's hooked up. So it's now time to test and see if we can get that Phantom electric supercharger working. Okay, inside the car here, we've got, this is my throttle switch, the gas pedal switch. Normally this is attached close to the gas pedal down there. And when you press on the gas pedal, that will move this little lever, right like this. So let's see if we now get both stages. Let's see if I can do this with one hand here. We're looking for, hopefully you can hear the electric supercharger, because the motor is off, so you can hear just the electric supercharger spinning by itself. Okay, let's go. Stage one. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, let's go. Stage one. Did you hear that? Two stages. It started off slower and then faster. So let's try it again. Yes. Okay. Okay, there you have it. I've fixed my problem. Although just like before, some other projects I've done, 
I sort of go in the wrong direction at first and then I, I found the right solution. But I thought it was a switch, but it wasn't a switch. It was actually just a worn out battery. So of course, that's the first thing to do is check the, the batteries, check the connections. And my new battery has now allowed my electric supercharger back into full power and I can't wait to get it out in the road and test it. So that's next coming up is a video testing my electric supercharger on the road with a zero to 60 time. A time, uh, I'll try to do a time without the electric supercharger of course and then a time with the electric supercharger and that will show the difference that it makes. All right, so now that I've got my supercharger working, I'll be having a lot more videos with that real soon. Anyway, thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time.